Hello, this is uh, Sajid from Brain Lab, and I'm going to take you through our latest course offering, which is EV Technician. Now, you might be wondering why exactly do we need a course on EV Technician? Because as you see, a car or a bike for that matter, it's just like a regular vehicle. An electric vehicle is also going to be like a regular vehicle, except for the fact that it's got some batteries and motors and controllers and some charges added on to it. Which brings us to the next question. Why exactly should we be learning about this if they are so similar and they're only slightly more different? By now, you would have been bombarded with a lot of different advertisements from a lot of different people asking you to learn about electric vehicle engineering. Now, let me ask you a question. How many engineers does it take to engineer a complete vehicle? Let's take, for example, Winfast is setting up a plant in um, Tutukurin, Tamil Nadu. So how many engineers do you think they're going to need? My rough estimate would be they would probably be needing somewhere about, uh, let's say, a thousand, right? Uh, 2,500 engineers. Now, this is basically uh, estimating on the uh, higher side, assuming that um, they're going to have a lot of R&D happening here. Now, assuming that this company has successfully engineered their vehicle to be uh, you know, suitable for Indian conditions and then they start selling on the road, how many technicians do we think um, would be needed to maintain this vehicle? Ideally, you would need about for every 100, 150 vehicles that are being serviced every day, you would need about 20 to 25 engineers, right? 25 technicians. Now, based on the previous numbers, there were 4 lakh um, electric vehicles which were sold in Tamil Nadu alone. So this alone would warrant something like about 1,500 to 2,000 technicians, right? So that's on the numbers part, the quantity, but let's get to the quality part of it. Why should you learn something on to be an EV technician? Now, there are four compelling reasons for that. So the first one is the amount of developments, the amount of investments that's going into the EV sector especially in Tamil Nadu. I'm not talking about the other states. I'm talking only about Tamil Nadu. So there's going to be about 60,000 crores of investments. And we've already seen Ola set up the biggest electric vehicle factory close to Krishnagiri. Winfast is coming up in Tutukurin. We have Ashok Leyland, TI Clean Mobility, Stellantis, Hyundai, um, not to mention all the tier one suppliers who are also putting up battery manufacturing, charger manufacturing plants in Tamil Nadu. The second biggest uh, reason, compelling reason, is the business opportunities that is available for you. If jobs do not interest, then business, right? The electric vehicle retrofit market. In fact, this course, we are tying up with a couple of retrofit companies who offer retrofit kits for autos to start with. And they would be probably doing the same for Tata A's and probably moving up to buses and lorries. So the electric vehicle retrofit business is a huge market for us over there. Then we have the options to pick up electric vehicle service centers. We have battery stations, swap stations, a whole lot of business opportunities which comes up. Now, assume that the jobs and business, they are both not for you. Then what more do we have? This course would still teach you quite a lot of domain knowledge that you would need irrespective of your current position. You might be a student wanting to go for your higher studies or you might be um, an engineering graduate. You might be an engineer working somewhere and you want to pick up these skills. So these can give you quite a lot of domain knowledge. And the same domain knowledge, you could kind of like also be uh, using it to leverage on sales and marketing activities. So the reason is why the reason why is because an EV technician is someone who works directly with customers. He is not sitting um, inside office rooms, he's working directly with customers, which means you get to hear the voice of customers, which is a very important uh, feedback for any R&D or a startup or, or, or just like a, a service advisor kind of a job as well. Now, if EV technician is so good uh, in terms of the number of people that is needed and compelling reasons, then what exactly is stopping you from being an EV technician, right? The challenges. Let's speak about the challenges. The challenges as we currently see it, we think there would be three primary challenges for you. So one is who recognizes your learning? 
you have done a course from rain lab but who's going to say yes this this person has done the course and he's now suitable to be an ev technician that is the accreditation part for this we are um, tying up with ASTC and Tamil Nadu Skill Development Corporation as well. We are also tying up with consulting companies like Mobility Next and startups like Convert and quite a few more startups whom we would probably be in a position to reveal a couple of weeks down the line. So industry, consulting companies and then the uh, educational uh, support bodies, not the educational institutions per se, but the support bodies, the skill development councils, we bring them together and our curriculum is in line with all of these partners, which is good enough recognition for whatever you're doing. Now, the second question which comes up is, is it going to be knowledge based or is it going to be skills based? There's a lot of difference with this. There's quite a lot of um, you know, debates which runs around it. So knowledge is basically what you would probably learn in engineering, a lot of theory, a lot of mathematical concepts, quite a lot of things like that. Skills is how do you actually work with it, right? Now, since we are um, aligned with Automotive Skill Development Corporation of India, and since we are working with the industries directly, you could say that our course is more um, you know, catering towards the skills rather than just knowledge because skills is ultimately what gets you jobs, right? So as such, our course is in compliance with the NSQF framework. It meets or exceeds the AAC level. So AAC is basically the American um, Automotive Technician Association, uh, Automotive Service, um, American Society for Automotive Service Excellence, something like that. And if you are also looking at it, to kind of um, you know work as a credit alternative for your current uh, engineering courses this will again meet all your college curriculum requirements as well and finally we don't stop there what we also do is we align ourselves with the national skills registry we uh, since we are partnering with the asdc there's quite a lot of internships and placement opportunities which comes along with it Tamil Nadu Skill Development Corporation is again the Apex Skill Association, Apex Skill Body, um, which is spearheading all the skill development as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. So which means there's going to be quite a lot of industry partnerships which comes in with it, which would kind of pave the way for you to go forward. Now, the next important question is obviously going to be about how are we going to learn it, right? You speak about quite a lot of different, um, you know, books and uh, courses and things like that. How is it that we are going to be learning it? I will allow you to probably read what is there on the slide here. But let me just tell you um, one thing. We are not going to go with a structured learning as in how you expect from an engineering or a regular course. So what I mean by a structured learning is I'm not going to say, OK, week one, we do this and then week two, we do this week three, we do this. It's not going to be linear, but rather what we're going to be doing is um, fundamentals. Of course, fundamentals is needed. So fundamentals would be something which we would, of course, ask everyone to do it initially. But if you know the fundamentals, you could uh, skip this. It's not compulsory. You could skip it. So once you're done with it, then we immediately put you to work on an electric vehicle either a two-wheeler or a three-wheeler. So we ask you to build an electric three-wheeler. When we say build, um, you're not going to be fabricating. You're going to have a retrofit kit. You're going to retrofit an electric auto. So while you retrofit an electric auto, we're going to ask you some questions. Say, why did you use this motor? Why can't we probably get a different motor? Or why can't we put a bigger motor in an auto? Um, or can we increase the size of the battery pack? Um, do you think that you need um, so much of charging capacity? Can we integrate the charger? I mean, there's going to be quite a lot of questions like that which comes up, right? And once the questions come up, you start, you know, jumping between modules. So you go to motor and then you go to battery pack and then you probably go to power electronics. So you keep jumping back and forth, right? And as this back and forth, back and forth learning happens, you get a real understanding about why is it that you're learning that particular module. You are not, uh, it's not going to be a rote learning. I'm not going to cram things into your head. We are going to go step by step. We are going to be kind of taking you through that. We're going to tell you how this is going to work, right? And finally, we have one full module dedicated to the homologation basics as well as diagnostics. So homologation talks about what do you need to do in order to get this vehicle uh, approved by ARAI to be sold in India. 
and diagnostics is if something does not work as it is supposed to then how do we handle it the next part of it is the curriculum is okay but how do we exactly learn it do we have to come down to chennai can we do it online right quite a lot of questions now you can do this course basically in two different flavors right so one is the online only right and there is an offline only and of course there is a hybrid mode so online module let's start with it so what you do is there are going to be some pre recorded courses which you learn and every day in the evening or a weekly schedule based on a weekly schedule depending on what batch you are in um, weekdays after your office hours 6 to 8 or 7 to 9 something like that depending on the batch uh, requirements we will have sessions where you will cover all your learning now along with the learning there will be some hands on exercises there will be some calculations there will be quite a lot of things which happens so this part you can completely do it online now suppose you choose the offline only option then what happens is this live sessions right so this live sessions will happen for you at our workshop either in the am or pm batches so we have two batches one in the morning and one in the afternoon so depending on where you are you will be learning this modules like that now suppose you have learned it online so what do you do next right so you still need to do your hands on you still need to take part in some workshops and things like that so those options are available for you <clears throat> separately so you don't have to pay for both at once you can just um, enroll for online only complete the online modules and then next time whenever you have your holidays you can plan and you can come down for the practicals and workshops whereas for those of you who do it completely offline you can choose to do everything in one shot right so uh, it's it's like about i think uh, two months uh, it's going to be about eight weeks or something on an average so you can do all your um, you know your live sessions and your workshops and your practicals you can kind of cover all of these things together this is all great so um who's going to teach you this course right so we have lined up a couple of uh, different options for you so i'm going to be the lead trainer for you i'm sajit and uh, i'm the ceo of train lab i'm also an adjunct faculty at bits pilani where um, i teach similar courses to uh, quite a lot of industries and oems in india um i also work with uh, some tier one companies like dep rane msi i work with them as a technical consultant consulting uh, various different projects and with me you would have uh, my staff my team members mani vasan sujeet and yasser so these are people uh, who work with me at rain lab and um, they have also like uh, you know taken part in various um, autonomous vehicle development projects and uh, electric vehicle powertrain development projects which we have worked on so these are not just uh, instructors they are uh, our engineers who also develop as uh, instructors for you apart from it we also have mr venkatraj who is uh, the founder and ceo of mobility next um, he is also the uh, ex uh, deputy director general of sae india he is someone who has got 30 plus years experience at uh, ibm sae and tcs he would also be uh, interacting with you on a regular basis to kind of uh, give you an industry approach and how does a consulting approach look like and he would also be sharing his um, 30 years of experience with various different oems various different projects that he's been part of now i hope we have covered pretty much everything but uh, if you still do have any questions at all then what you can do is uh, reach out to us on the uh, whatsapp number and uh, we can also set up a personal session with uh, one of our career counselors or you could also like uh, try to see if we can have a one on one interaction so we could understand your requirements better and uh, let you know how we could be able to help you thank you